Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on this latest edition of The Chat. I'm Sean Evans with the Chatham County Public Information Office, and with me today I have two guests from Chatham Emergency Management Agency. We have Chelsea Sawyer. Chelsea, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And Allie Paget, our new Assistant Director for SEMA. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Allie, I'm going to start with you. Since you're pretty fresh and new to the role here with SEMA, tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Okay. So um, I've been in the military for 20 years. Uh, I did 14 years of active duty, and then I transitioned over to the reserve. Um, I was a C-130 loadmaster, so I flew in a lot of uh, humanitarian support deployments, things of that nature. Um, but way before then, I was interested in emergency management. It seems to be a family business. Uh, one aunt owned her own business for quite some time before they decided to venture off into something else. And then uh, my other aunt retired at the agency I was working for in Alabama. Oh, wow. So uh, emergency management runs deep. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, got two little kids that are wonderful um, for the most part. They're very <laughs> hyper at sometimes. I'm exhausted most days, yeah, okay. but they keep me on my toes. Mm -hmm. And um, we're new to Chatham, so I'm just excited to be here, and, and we're excited for whatever new adventures come our way. Well, we're excited to have you, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, what attracted you initially to Chatham County? Well, first off, Chatham's beautiful, mm -hmm. so that's, that's an easy sell right there. Um, the coast, I've always wanted to be on the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother has the luxury of being on the Florida coast, so I said, well, let's go in the opposite direction and get on that coast, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> No offense, Mom. So, uh, so uh, Chatham's beautiful, but I, I'm also stationed at Charleston Air Force Base. Uh, so, it's a pretty decent commute for me. It's not a bad little drive, and um, you know, I just I needed a change. I wanted to grow, and I felt like I had done that as much as I could in Alabama. So it was time, it was time to press on and up. Very good. Well, glad you picked us. Sure. Uh, what'll be your main duties and responsibilities as an assistant director with SEMA? So I'm primarily over operations. So uh, Randall is the plan master is what I like to call him. So I kind of like to equate it as uh, I try to make the plans come to life. Uh, that's my portion of it most for the most part. Um, anything, uh, I, it's an ongoing joke with the director and I, anything that beeps and squeaks is mine. Uh, so a lot of the technology, a lot of the radios, a lot of the communications, the sirens, uh, all of those programs fall underneath operations. Uh, EOC management falls underneath operations and um, really it's just working hand in hand with Randall with the planning division and um, we're all just so collectively a team and we all mesh well so well. It's really just uh, the mission we've got you know, given to us and carrying it out. So mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to working anywhere I have to, and I, I think the director knows that, and so does Randall and Chelsea. So, um, but as far as operations goes, um, all, all the technical stuff uh, typically falls underneath me. Um, and just knowing when to uh, pull the trigger on things, you know, mm -hmm. making the decisions uh, in, in a in a quick moment if need be, uh, but also relying on Randall with his expertise as well and working closely as a team with him. Very good. Well, Chelsea, I don't want to leave you out here. Hey. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm <laughs> good, good. good. I'm really excited to have AP join the team. Well, She's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and uh, forgive me, your title again. I just want to get that on the record here yeah, before absolutely. we get too far into absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm the new emergency preparedness manager. Okay, it's good. been a running joke that my title changes regularly, but I hope that this one's going to stick. You wear a lot of hats. I okay. do. All she right. Does. Well, I wanted to get that in before I, I got into the next question. Allie, um, so we're now in the 2023 hurricane season. Yes. Since it is early, uh, what should people be doing to potentially prepare for a weather event? Sure. Um, so having a plan is first and foremost. You've got to have an inside community household plan, right? Um, checking on things that are really important, especially in a coastal area, your insurance, your homeowner's mm -hmm. insurance, your property insurance, um, just ensuring that everything's up to date and the coverage is is desirable and what is needed for your area. Knowing your flood, uh, flood zones where you're living, um, if you don't have flood, you know, insurance and you live in one of those flood zones, you probably need it. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I'll tell you what we're doing at my house. Uh, we're kind of implementing the 72-hour rule because um, should we do, should we have a, a significant hurricane this year or hurricane period? 
um, I'm going to go ahead and get my family into the practice of evacuating mm -hmm. um, because we've got small kids and then the fur kids, you know, mm -hmm. so there's there's a lot. It's a motley crew and there's there's we're kind of big. So uh, we've got 72 hour bags. And so what mm -hmm. we're doing is just, you know, enough clothes to get through, you know, three or four days. And mm -hmm. we've al already got like the pet stuff packed up and ready to go. And we just have it sitting in a corner. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, should something happen at a moment's notice, then my family can get to safety because obviously I'll be here with the SEMA team. Right, right. So that's important, mm -hmm. um, paying attention to the weather and, and social media. Um, a lot of people, it was funny, I did a, a summer camp yesterday with some yeah. uh, youth from Chatham and I said, so what do you, what do you think we should do, you know, if, if we're talking about a hurricane and it's coming our way? And, mm -hmm. and, and there was one little guy who kept raising his hand. He's like, we're leaving. My mom doesn't play that, right? <laughs> that's fantastic. Right? That's but it's not terrible it. advice, yeah, right? No, so, no. Um, but that's their plan, right? Mm -hmm. That's their family plan. We're leaving. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just having a plan, executing it, uh, talking to your children so that it's not scary or mm -hmm. it's not chaos. Um, and just being as well prepared as you possibly can. And then, you know, we'll probably get into the home preparedness a, a little later uh, in, the, in the podcast here. So, but just having a plan, executing 72 hours worth of stuff. If you're going to stay and ride it out. Um, make sure you've got enough food to last because we don't know when we'll be able to get to you. Exactly. Because uh, we've got to keep first responders safe as well. Certainly. What is, uh, and just a quick question here with the 72 hour bags, what does that look like and how often do you have to refresh it? And I mean, is it bulky? Does it take up a lot of so, space? Or? So it looks different for everyone. I'm sure. a little bougie, so mine's bulky, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> you know, just it changes the clothes. Uh, for the kids, the big thing is their comfort items, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my son has this this Tigger that he carries around mm -hmm. and, and we have a spare backup in everyone's house. Okay. Like every family <laughs> member has a Tigger in case we leave it because idea. we're not driving back from from Alabama to get Tigger right so you know for the kids it's just important stuff like things that comfort them and, and make them feel secure and safe clothes can be washed right so you know two or three changes of clothes so that you can you know just rotate them in and out it doesn't have to be a big bag okay. it's whatever your personal comfort level is but uh, my family unfortunately I've even got the kids a little bougie so our bags might be a little heavier than others <laughs> <laughs> very good well uh, Chelsea I do want to ask now uh, SEMA alerts that's a big component of uh, this this hurricane season that we're in now why is it important for folks to have those and, and how do they get yeah absolutely so you know, AP already started the conversation with having a family emergency plan mm -hmm. and a big part of your plan is how are you going to receive alerts for that? Now, mm -hmm. SEMA has a, a fantastic program that we really enjoy. They're called SEMA alerts, as you mentioned. You can text SEMA or CEMA to 77295 mm -hmm. and you will automatically be signed up for SEMA alerts. The benefit of a, uh, we call it a fast follow feature, mm -hmm. is that you can text SEMA to that number and automatically receive alerts. If you don't want to receive those alerts anymore, all you have to do is text STOP. And it's just as simple to opt in and opt out of them. And it's a really great method to get the emergency information that you need at the exact time that you want it. You know, with severe weather that's been coming in, there's a possibility of a severe thunderstorm warning any time this summer. So not this even talk. Yeah, this <laughs> week, no kidding. But there's the possibility, you know, that you could have an emergency alert that needs to be sent to you right then, mm -hmm. or, you know, you could wait for an actual hurricane event, but it's a, a really, really good program. We're not the only name in the game. There are also really great, you know, local meteorologists that have alerting met methods as well. So figure out what works for you and your family. It's mm -hmm. what we always recommend, but I mean, SEMA alerts are pretty fantastic. I was going to say, and, and local news agencies, they keep an eye on your alerts exactly. as well. So. Absolutely. Uh, how can people apply for the hurricane registry, and why is that important? Yeah, absolutely. So the hurricane registry is a registry that's run by the Coastal Health District. So it's for all eight coastal counties in Georgia. And it is a program for those that have functional access or medical needs. So it's not it's not a program for just anybody to be a part of. Right. They have to meet certain qualifications. And there's a phone number that you can call. It's it's one eight three three C H D register. That's the best way to remember it. Uh, there are um, numbers that 
account. So sometimes I feel like I have to explain that CHD register isn't the actual numbers, but the numbers on your phone associate to And we'll uh, punch numbers. those up on a graphic for Perfect. you. Perfect. Thank so. you. <laughs> I was like, sometimes people get confused. That's okay. That's uh, okay. But yeah, so that CHD register is how you would apply. And it's a really good program for those that don't have the resources to be able to evacuate themselves, but need that extra assistance to live independently in a shelter. Yeah. So it's kind of broken up into two. You've got functional and access needs, mm -hmm. and those are people that just need that extra support to live in a shelter. So maybe day in and day out, they're totally fine getting around their home, getting around the community, but you put them in a particularly stressful environment, you put them in an evacuation shelter, yeah. they might have a little bit more of a challenging time. Now that's separate than those that have medical needs. Those that qualify for the medical registry are those that need help from a skilled medical professional. That's someone that may have medication that needs to be administered by a healthcare professional, maybe dialysis, maybe they have an IV or, or some type of infusion device. Those, they should know and they should be able to say like, oh, I think I need help from someone that's really more medically trained they are evacuated to a separate location mm -hmm. that is also inland but not quite a shelter environment and much earlier than we absolutely typically see for the mandatory evacuation. absolutely okay. absolutely uh ali in the event of a hurricane how important is it to know evacuation zones you know if you're living in one and especially those new to the area like yourself for sure so um chelsea helped me a lot with that uh, especially <laughs> while house hunting um, it's important to know those zones, your evacuation zones, your flood zones, all of those things. Um, you want to organize departure and mm -hmm. you want to organize re-entry uh, right. and that causes less confusion, less panic, less chaos um, and face it, less accidents as well because mm -hmm. there's so many people moving in one direction at one time. Right. Um, so it's important for people to kind of research that before they do move to the area and, and, and once they get here it's not too late. but. You know, once you, you move to a coastal area, uh, hurricane season's probably not the time to start educating yourself a little bit mm -hmm. about what's this going to be like, right? Sure. But if it should happen, what you do need to know is, is your, um, your evacuation zones because what will happen is it'll be an organized evacuation if there is a mandatory evacuation. Mm -hmm. And they'll do reentry by zones as well. And if you're not in that zone, you won't be allowed to reenter uh, once, once people start coming back into the area. Um, and, and again, you know, you hear me talk a lot about insurance, but I mean, it, people get themselves prepared and they get their families prepared, but sometimes we forget, right? Mm -hmm. And then they come back and their home is devastated and there's no help. And, and so that's what I really want to drive home to people also is knowing what zones you're in, especially flood zones, um, so that if you do require that type of insurance, you will be covered on the back end. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, just think about it like your evacuation zones. Okay, I'm, I might be in a flood zone. Let me get my insurance too. So yeah. um, maybe I'm putting a plug out there for all insurance agents. I don't know. But, <laughs> you know, I, I, I speak from experience sure. of, of not, not educating myself about areas that I've lived in prior and um maybe didn't make the best decisions financially because of that so well, yeah. um, it's important and I, th I believe it is legally required uh, yes. for owning a home to have that insurance yeah. anyway. well some states yes, yes. <laughs> uh, i do want to ask also uh things folks can do in a hurricane uh, situation to hurricane proof their homes so um Loose debris, uh, you know, in, in the state of Alabama where I used to live, we called the trampoline the state bird um, because it never <laughs> failed. Uh, anytime there was a storm, there was a trampoline in a tree, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that you're just uh, uh, securing the loose objects in your, in your um, backyard or in your front yard. If you don't have anywhere that you can put them mm -hmm. so that until the storm is passed, then make sure you're securing them, strap them down to something. Um, debris like trees. Uh, brushes, uh, things like that. Just ensure that that stuff's not going to like impale in your house, uh, mm -hmm. especially older trees. You know, we have a lot of old, beautiful trees here in Chatham. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they may not be as sound as they, they once were. So mm -hmm. just knowing that, keeping those trimmed back so that, you know, nothing goes through their house or in their house. Um, and if you're like me, I like to stay cool. Right. So I would tell people to cool their house as much as possible, <laughs> just in case they lose power. <laughs> so then you won't be as as uncomfortable as you you could be yeah. if it's already a little warm inside your house you've got your freezers and things don't open up your freezers mm -hmm. leave those things closed right 
Make sure you've got your batteries, your backup lighting, um, however you can do that, and fully charge all your cell phones. Um, to me, that all just goes into to getting ready for a potential storm that comes your way. Um, get the backup batteries. You know, they're pretty cheap at Walmart. Get the backup batteries for all your electronics so that you can call for help if you need to call for help. Yeah. Um, just things like that, but the big thing for the outside is, uh, you know, a lot of the, the homes now are getting the new roofs, the architectural uh, mm -hmm. shingling roof, and yep. those seem to be pretty solid, but if you don't have something like that, um, you just need to be aware, ensure, go up there, ensure that everything's cleaned off, nothing's obstructing your gutters, um, just make sure you already don't have damage that you're not aware of um, that could potentially get worse. So. Right. You know, just secure everything to the best of your ability, really. Um, mm -hmm. it, no, it, there's no one way to do it. There's no right, wrong way to do it. Just uh, whatever suits that family's needs, really. Certainly. I was telling Chelsea, actually, earlier this week, was it this week or last week? I, don't, I can't remember, that I need to clean out my gutters because <laughs> the past couple of rains we've gotten, it is not good. Let bad. me just put it that way. I've, I've gotten an earful from my wife. Um, well, I'll tell you, um, I went around and did some damage assessments after Matthew and after Irma, mm -hmm. and there were homes that, you know, usually very sound looking homes, but they had debris that was just gathering on po portions of their roof. Mm -hmm. and what Allie's saying is really important. Clean those sections off. Yeah. Right where they had large um, portions of debris that just kind of sat is where that flooding started to pool. And when you've got debris that's sitting and then you've got rain that's falling on top of it, it's a lot easier sure. for that water to just seep through that roof because yeah. it's already decaying because you're leaving a lot of debris sitting on top of it. Right, yeah, the weight of it, whatever else. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you. And uh, Chelsea, for uh, evacuations, if folks have to leave, what's the difference, um, and this is important, between an evacuation order and a mandatory evacuation order? I know it's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory, but if you can, dive into that. Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, you will not hear the term voluntary evacuation order in Chatham County. That's not terminology that we use. So your question is right on point, evacuation, versus mandatory evacuation. Evacuation order is a general statement urging and encouraging residents, visitors, business owners in the area to evacuate. A mandatory evacuation order is an executive directive. It requires all residents, visitors, business owners, anybody in that area to evacuate. Personal discretion is not an option. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest distinctions between an evacuation order and a mandatory evacuation order is that during a mandatory evacuation order, there is no legal obligation for first responders mm -hmm. to respond. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we really want our residents to understand. If you do not heed mandatory evacuation orders and you were to have a challenge, you were to call 911, mm -hmm. there is a very solid chance that once we reach those sustained tropical storm force winds, first responders aren't going to be able to get to you. Right. I saw it firsthand during Matthew. I saw it during Irma. It was devastating to have yeah. all of these, these individuals, residents of, of our community call and say, I need help, but there was no way to physically get to them. Yeah. And that is terrifying, honestly. Yeah. You know, people didn't think it was going to be as bad as it was and then found very, very quickly that it, it wasn't okay. Yeah. Um, you know, something else to keep in mind, when we talk about mandatory evacuation orders, and I've had a lot of conversations with insurance agencies and the Department of Insurance, mm -hmm. if you've paid into a life insurance policy and you do not heed evacuation orders and there's a mandatory evacuation order mm -hmm. and you were to perish in that storm, your life insurance policy is null and void. Wow. We've seen that, um, you know, unfortunately here in Chatham County specifically. Mm -hmm. That's not a story that you want to be yours. Mm. You don't want to not heed a warning and and lose your life and, and then everything you've paid into to support your family mm -hmm. upon your demise have that completely go away. I had no idea. Yeah. That's that's a new bit of information for me. And, and you're right, during Matthew and Irma, uh, folks did find themselves in situations where they needed help. Mm -hmm. High water rescues in neighborhoods that, yep. you know, traditionally haven't flooded that badly. Right. Uh, and it did take a while for first responders to get there and get resources around the county because the roads weren't the best. The roads, the conditions, yeah. you know, you can't yep. send out, if you need a fire truck, you can't send out a high profile mm -hmm. vehicle like that, that you have the opportunity for 
those vehicles to fall over. Sure. You know, that, that would be really dangerous for our first responders. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, switching gears here a bit, I know you all get a lot of questions, Ali, about I-16, the contraflow, and ongoing construction, which we know is still has a lot to go. Uh, <laughs> can you update us on, on the interactions between GDOT and SEMA and how you all coordinate that should contraflow sure. need to go into play? We have a great partnership with GDOT. Um, we're in contact with them uh, constantly about, you know, I-16, especially during hurricane season, having those important conversations. And um, they assure us that, you know, should there be a mandatory evacuation or it be, or contra flow be needed, mm -hmm. um, that they'll have everything ready to go. And I, I firmly believe that. Yeah, it's, if you haven't seen our contra flow before or pictures of the video of it. it I is, have seen. It is, it is wild <laughs> to see two sides of the it interstate is. all go in the same direction. It's it surreal. Is. It, it is. really is, but it necessary. Is. Absolutely. Yep. Well, uh, Chelsea, any events that we have coming up for SEMA that you want folks to know about? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, mm -hmm. we have what's called the Chatham County Disaster Faith Network, which mm -hmm. is an organization that uh, works directly with SEMA and we support local houses of worship and faith-based organizations. It's really a, a good partnership. We have over 350 houses of worship that receive communication from us on a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. Each quarter we have a workshop that's designed specifically for those houses of worship, their leadership, uh, their parishioners, whoever would like to attend. Mm -hmm. This um, this next or during this quarter we're um, having a workshop with the Mediation Center of Coastal Georgia talking mm -hmm. about de-escalation strategies for houses of worship. You think a lot of times those in the faith-based sector, they see all kinds of sides of people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not the best side of people. Mm -hmm. You know, people will come to a faith-based organization or a house of worship when they are facing some dire situations. So we are going to be teaching our faith-based leaders how you can take someone that is very stressed out, very irate, um, having a really difficult day, and how you can de-escalate that and provide them the services and resources that they need to be the most successful. So that you're not calling 911 to handle a, an incident that you might be able to de-escalate yourself. Sure. So a really great program that's gonna be on July the 11th at okay. Kingdom Life Christian, Christian Fellowship mm -hmm. on Montgomery Crossroads. A great partnership with them to, yeah. to host it. Uh, but that's a, a big one coming up on July the 11th that we're really excited about. Pastor Roberson, right? Yes. Yeah, he's great. He's fantastic. Easy to work with. Yes. I uh, do want to ask, uh, now that you're, again, now new in the role here with SEMA, are there any initiatives or... Um, or projects that you'd like to shepherd or implement now that you're here? So probably more of an initiative than a, than a project at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I've always focused on uh, depth and expertise mm -hmm. uh, and training really, but depth as I want my ops um, team to be able to jump in at any given point mm -hmm. to any other position on the ops team and fulfill what's required of that, that position. Mm -hmm. um, people get sick things happen in your families um, and if we don't have that depth then you know it can be a lot just for me to have to you know jump in and try to do everything right. so um, we're focusing on in the operations division we're focusing a lot on depth we're focusing on training um, I've, I've got a radio department that I'm kind of building up a little bit and um, I can spell radio and I know enough to be dangerous let's just be real um, not one of my huge expertise, but luckily for me, I do have some, some experts in the field working for me. Yep. And uh, just building up their training and their licensures and, and, and making sure that they feel confident mm -hmm. with what they've been charged to do, especially in times of a disaster. Um, and then my other thing is uh, bringing those plans to life, like I was talking about earlier. You know, it's, it's important for me to get in here and read these plans, but not just read them, but understand them mm -hmm. and see where our role as operations fits into them. How do I make that come to life so that we're keeping the people of uh, Chatham County, you know, safe? So that's really kind of what I'm focusing on right now. Now, if you ask me maybe in a few more months if there's a pet project, there may be. Mm -hmm. um, but right now I'm really just trying to focus on being the best I can can be for Chatham um, and and there's a lot these this this team that I've stepped into uh, I can't say enough about it's 
probably, and I'm not just saying it because I'm working here, but <laughs> definitely one of the most phenomenal teams I've ever been a part of. And they are smart and they are determined and driven and they've got things in place and I've, I've got to catch up to them. And so it's, it's a lot of work just to catch up to them. So pet projects right now, no, not any of those really, just, uh, just trying to keep up. <laughs> hey, cross training is enough. I, I get it. I get it. Well, Allie, Chelsea, anything that I missed that you want to touch on here before we end? You know, one thing I just would like to, to reiterate that Allie had said is make your emergency kit yours. Yeah. Don't go to just a random box store and buy what they have available. Make it specific to you and to your family. You know, we've got small kids. The type of food that small kids eat is probably very different than what you would really want them to eat, especially in a disaster environment. Our kit has a whole lot of ravioli, Sean. I'm okay. not going to lie. Yeah. But find Got to have the gummies. Gummies. It's got gummies. Find, yeah, find what works kit, for so you. Yeah, <laughs> find, find what works for you. I think a lot of times people think that it needs to be, it needs to look a certain mm -hmm. way, yeah. and it doesn't. It needs to just be what you need. Very good. Yeah. Um, and one thing actually that I wanted to bring up also uh, is it's important, right, for folks to pay attention to, to the authorities and, and those locally and not necessarily dive online and start going down rabbit holes with folks that oh. have, I know I could really get you started on a tirade there, <laughs> but could. it is easy for people to fall into that, um, that mode of seeking information from sites that aren't as reputable as the folks who are in the know here locally, right? Absolutely. So you have to think we have a National Weather Service office in Charleston that covers us specifically. They are going to be looking at the city of Savannah, at Chatham County, and, and giving us forecasts for us. Mm -hmm. It's very different than looking at these national sites or these sites that, that you know, these people are located in Colorado or, you mm -hmm. know, somewhere that's not even affected by these storms. So. Right really pay attention to that hyper local alerting programs and SEMA is going to share the, those official sources. Yeah. All right, Chelsea Sawyer, Ali Padgett, thank you both so much for joining us on this episode of The Chat. Thank you all for joining us as well. You can catch us next time.